Like something really bad is gonna happen this year. Now wouldn't that be great if I said that at the beginning of the year, during uh right before coronavirus really hit the shit, hit the fan. Uh but no, I feel like this year is gonna end with a bang. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe the coronavirus is finally gonna give us zombies. Because we've all been wishing for real life zombies. You know this. You know you've been waiting for the zombie apocalypse to hit. Maybe that's what's going to happen. COVID-19 slash Z at the end of the year. I don't know. That's not a prediction. Uh, What's up to the folks in Sweden, Germany, Spain, Ireland, New Zealand, India, Australia, Canada, the UK, and of course the US of A, and every other country in between like South Africa. Yeah. Those are the guys that listened to the podcast last week. That's only the top 10. So there's... uh, a longer list of smaller places like in South America. There's other uh, countries in Europe. Some very surprising ones. They're the ones that love the weed. For some reason, are not listening. I don't know why. I got to question that entirely. Because I would think that the ganja, the ganja European countries should be down with the UFOs. Anyway, episode 414. This is the space episode. So we're going to talk about recent space news, because that's what it's about. But before we get any further, happy birthday to Davina down in South Texas. That is, uh, I was going to say Mrs. Dre, but really today is the other way around. The other way around, he's uh, Mr. Davina. So uh, happy birthday to Davina. The first song, by the way, in this episode is like a birthday shout out to Davina. And Dre, actually, so get the mojito ready, because you're going to like that one. In other news, space is a crazy thing. I had the craziest idea. What if, and I think it was a green man that was in the chat. I don't even know if I'm live right now. It says I am, but like I'm telling you, I've got this uh, doom and gloom hovering over me right now. I feel something really bad's going to go on. Anyway, I just want to say that... Uh, I had this conversation in the Discord chat. If you're not in it, come on, get in it. I post a link everywhere. I post it on YouTube. I post it in the uh, the Discord chat. Uh, I'm sorry, not the Discord chat, but in the uh, the speaker description for the episode. So it's everywhere. It's on Apple. It's on Google. It's You can't miss it. But on there during the day, sometimes when I'm on the shitter, I have ideas. One of the ideas was, what if this uh, space race... Even the corporate race into space, maybe that is going to keep UFOs further from us. There's only a select few of people that are going to make it into space using a corporation, which, mind you, there isn't a corporation out there going to space that does not have some kind of entanglement with a government. I want you to keep that in mind. 
it is it is fundamental to the situation that we're going to come across. Because in many respects, we see, oh, yeah, you know, big middle finger to you fuckers who are the cabal, as uh, Stephen Greer would say, because now we get to take all our life savings, we get to go into space and screw you. You're not going to keep aliens away from us. You're not going to keep the truth anymore. No, they are. Really think about what's happening. All of these private organizations have made deals, have contracts, have um, agreements with local governments. And not just, you know, Tom and Dick Harry in the, uh, let's say, the Parliament or in Congress. No, they've got contracts with government officials that deal with defense, military. So no, you you've got to be you got to be more open minded, and you 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 got to follow the money, as they say, follow the big bucks, because the big bucks are not coming from you and I. They're coming from the established government, and uh, these organizations are going to do whatever they can to keep the money flowing. I'm just being honest. That's what happened to me, you know. That's what happens to me when I'm sitting on there just thinking about stuff. That That's what came to mind. Anyway, before, let me see. Let's see who's live. We got Green Man. We got Dave Down Under. And that's it. I have a feeling Dre and Davina are not going to make it because this is uh, way past their bedtime. So uh, this first song, I'm going to go ahead and play so we can get into this. But this first song dedicated, happy birthday to Davina down in South Texas. Here we go. By the way, get your mojito ready. It is a Mission Impossible, believe it or not. It really is. Uh, that goes out to uh, the birthday lady down south in Texas. 
By the way, talk about down south in Texas, SpaceX gearing for a 12-mile high test with prototype of Mars colonizing ship. This is fantastic because we've been seeing the aerosol can, the uh, little tank on stubby landing legs. Uh, we've seen all of that the last few, what is it, SN5, SN6, uh, SN7. But we don't see anything that um, even looks remotely close to the super phallus. No, things have, uh, have not gone to that point, but... SN8. Apparently, SN8 is going to bring you Silver Phallus greatness. And not only is it going to give you a glimpse into what the future holds for those uh, 100 people taking a one way trip to Mars. Yeah, 100 people. Can you imagine that? But they will be known in history. As a 100. Think about it. You know, there's a lot of shows out there that use the term 100. I think one of them was about people coming back from the dead. But uh, I digress. The 100. The first 100 people to leave our planet's orbit. And land on a different planet in the solar system. With no return ticket apparently. I don't know. I think that's still up to grabs. I think for some reason, in the back of my head, I'm thinking that uh, SpaceX and Elon are still trying to come up with a way to let some of them come back. I, I just feel that, that eventually, if they don't die of old age, some of them will return. Don't hold me to it, because I'm not part of the company. Anyway, so uh, we've seen SM5, SM6, SM7, and now Elon, on September the 12th, made this announcement, SN8 Starship, with the flaps, the nose cone should be done in about a week. That was on the 12th, so we're uh, getting close to a week right now. So this weekend, he says, by this weekend, SN8 should be ready, decked out. And not only would it be decked out, but it is going to do the flight that we've all been waiting for. This I know we've been waiting for all of them, okay? I get it. But this is the one we've want we've wanted to see. This is the twelve miles, sixty thousand foot jump. Why is it a jump? Because it's gonna take off and then it's gonna free fall. It's gonna free fall all the way right all the way up the hell back down. And then all of a sudden, in the last few moments, it'll maneuver itself into a safe landing. After a free fall from 12 miles up. This is the one that really, if SpaceX is able to to get this done, if it's able to nail it on the money, that's it. Everybody else just step aside. We we've that this is it. This will be the vehicle to Mars. Yeah, plain and simple. There's just no way around it. It'll first go to the moon, which is what the plan says. From there, they'll do some things in order to get ready to go to Mars. The plan is, and really I've seen this over and over. I think anyone that is thinking about doing a mission to Mars is planning to have some kind of a lunar base to refuel. Because you waste all this uh, fuel to leave our planet And so you need somewhere to refuel, get things ready, to relaunch again. There are many um, sketches out there from SpaceX themselves of the uh, refueling Starship that will be loaded with nothing but fuel to fuel the Mars Starship in order to continue on that mission to the Red Planet. It's exciting. You know, I can't wait to see this. I, I, for One thing is, I don't want to be there. It's... You know, I feel like almost like Bob and Doug. You know, you're on the you're on a damn ship that's called the demo. And you, I don't feel like I don't feel like being anywhere in South Texas when this happens. Because I feel like the people in South Texas, you guys are the demos now. You've become the Bob and Doug 
of the uh, Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission. So basically, you're there to test whether or not this um, version of Starship SN8 is going to land on top of you. Or will it be able to do the ballerina dance, the free fall from 12 miles up and slowly at the very end land on his tippy toes like a dainty professional ballerina that twirls on her toes. That's what's coming. Now, uh, the other thing is, of course, they got to do static tests. Static fire tests, that's basically when they tie up the damn engine, the, the damn rocket down and fire the engine, see what happens. And the reason why this is going to be important, because it's not going to be just one rocket, it's going to be three. And these are new prototypes. New prototypes of the engine. So, yeah, there's a lot of testing that's going to happen. So I really, to be honest, I don't see this thing taking off. I see a static test definitely in our future before the end of the month. But I don't see it taking off before October. Which is okay. Because we're about to find out there's another test that's happening in October that we need to keep our eye out for because... Jeez Louise, it's another person, another rich to do person that uh, has got their eye on space. And by the way, here's uh, something really weird. I don't understand how the uh, the FCC would say, "Hey, since you've made since you've made a 500 foot leap three what three four times, hey, fuck it, go ahead and go up to 60,000 feet." I don't understand that. There's a, there's a lack of concern for safety and testing here that's beyond me. Like, I would think that they would be cautious enough to say, Hey, Elon, Elon, baby, hey, I know you're fantastic. <laughs> but could you possibly maybe just do like 5,000 feet first? Hey, let's see what happens. Let's see how you do. But no, according to Elon, they're going straight for the 60,000 feet. Uh, it's going to be crazy. You know, if anything, if something goes wrong, at least they're on the coast. And maybe, just maybe, they will land in the water somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico and, uh, you know, start over again. Because I'm sure SN9 and 10 are over there somewhere. And I think I saw an article saying that uh, SN9 is almost completely stacked. And SN10, they just started this week. So, it is what it is. Hopefully, everything is safe and there aren't any problems. Here's a little bit of fun fact in this article. By the way, the link is in the description if you want to check it out. A 165-foot, 50-meter starship is basically what the final design at the moment will be. And that is going to, and it's going to have the three, um, the three engines in it, the three Raptors. But the super heavy, the super heavy is what's going to propel the starship out of, uh, out away from the uh, Earth into space. That one will have 30 Raptor engines. This is why he's looking to build those platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. Could you imagine how fucking loud that would be to have 30 Raptor engines all go off at the same time? Yeah, I don't think you can do that in Boca Chica. And I think he knows that. So, like I said, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, can't wait to see. I'm hoping for an October launch of this uh, SN8 with the uh, full phallus costume on. But we'll see what happens. You you just never know. Never know at all. Check out this next track. But don't forget to uh, check out the article, too. And keep your eyes on South Texas because it's about to be a happening place.
like the second new thing for the news reports because I, uh, I I found the other one and I was thinking ah, it's old already we need to change it kind of like this news report about Space Force the chief of the uh, US Space Force doesn't want war in space but it must be prepared for it what does that really mean but isn't that basically how you you're supposed to run a military right isn't that the way it is you're not uh, looking for war, but for damn sure you got the big stick. You're going to maybe not start something, but you definitely want to stop it. Um, there was an announcement in the last few days by Chief of Space Operation General John W. Raymond. He says, we don't want to start no shit. We just want to go into space. We want to monitor stuff. We want to police things if we have to, but uh, if you push my buttons, I'll kick your ass. That's um, That basically is my translation of it. I don't know. But here's a quote. Uh, we want to deter from that uh, happening. However, if deterrence fails, a war that begins or extends into space will be fought over great distances at tremendous speeds. How the fuck does he know that? Suka. How does he know that? Tremendous speeds? Great distances? What the hell is going on? Did he just let us know something we didn't know? Or that we uh, conspire about? That we talk about? That we build conspiracies about? How does it help? What great distances the fuck is he talking about? If it's a uh, low orbit fight... Guess what? I um, it's not going very far. And if it's warring nations in space, 
Are you telling us that the initial announcement that Space Force was really initially just going to clean up space around the planet because it's still congested, there's a lot of junk out there. So, you know, they were going to go out and find a way to clean that up. But now you're telling us that you're going into deep space to kick some ass. Like uh, space troopers. So what is he talking about? I don't know. He apparently has uh, access to some future plans. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Anyway, uh, they had a um, a presentation for the uh, 2020 Air Force Association Air, Space, and Cyber Conference that uh, was held, believe it or not, by conference call. Yeah, they couldn't do this, do this in person because of COVID-19, China. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. It says, since its establishments, we've been in the business of slashing bureaucracy, delegating authority, enhancing accountability, and every at every crossroad, G- the general said, my opinion, big organizations are slow. We must move at, the sp- at speed to outpace the threats that we face. So he doesn't want any blue tape, or red tape, or green tape. He wants no tape. Don't tape him at all. Not even clear tape. He wants no tape around what Space Force has to do. It's got to be quick. And it's got to be fast. And I'll be honest. Any um, any military force that's going into space is going to kick somebody's ass with the intention to rule space. Because really, they're a little close-minded, right? They're looking at, oh, we're stuck in our little territory, but if we go to space, we will control it all. The whole fucking planet. So they're all going up there with that same desire to have control of space. So eventually that'll spill over to deep space, and I think that's what the general is talking about. He knows this is not going to stay local. We're going to have problems. We are definitely going to have problems. Uh, He's also working on cutting back the size of the uh, administrative people, I guess. He says he was able to cut down what they plan to have, a thousand people at the Pentagon. How can you fit more people in that damn place? Over a thousand people is what they plan, and they've cut that by 40%. 400 people lost their jobs, and not because of COVID-19, I don't think. Because Space Force is going to be light. It's going to be fast. It's going to be wicked. That's what the general wants. Um... Okay, here's a, another interesting part about this. So, we've got all these uh, folks, all these countries making deals with like SpaceX and stuff like that, and, and other other uh, companies that are doing you know space flight stuff, private corporations. But Space Force, the United States Space Force, is actually working with Norway. Isn't that fascinating? So they're working with Norway to host American payloads from Space Force in order to uh, put their junk in space quicker using Norway's space launches. But that's not even the end of it. They've even combined efforts with Japan. The uh, U.S. Space Force is going to uh, put some what they call quote unquote capabilities into Japanese satellites. Listen, I know money's a little tight, the economy's in the shitter thanks to Wuhan. I get it. But what's going on? What's going on here? Are the alliances that uh, that deep that they're going to go into space as well? I, I don't know. Listen, this is uh, the whole situation is pretty convoluted. Uh, when you take these uh, constellation satellites and how all these different governments are putting their two bits into them, and uh, you know you got Starlink and you got all these other ones that are popping up all over the place, and there's just too many people's hands in the cookie jar. It's really what I see and. 
Someone's someone's going to get the business. And it's going to be a raw deal. But Space Force is working. And apparently they're going to be fast. And they're going to be powerful and mighty. So keep an eye out for some advances. Wouldn't it be uh, just amazing if in two years Space Force comes out with an announcement of their uh, new ship for space. And it's not a starship because apparently they're supposed to get a couple of starships themselves from SpaceX. But it turns out to be a TR-3B. Wouldn't we just shit our pants several times knowing that this uh, aircraft has been spotted for decades in the air flying around and um, especially Corey Good knows about this. And now, all of a sudden, 2022, they tell us, oh, we've we've uh, designed this new ship based on the report from 2021 of crashed UFOs recovered by the government that uh, the United States Department of Defense decided that they would tell us about. I don't know. I might have just painted the path for you. Who knows? Who knows what it is that's coming? Lastly, there's a uh, uh, one of those uh, inspiring quotes by the general. These efforts improve our capabilities and they strengthen, uh, strengthen our partnership between our great nation. Come on. One false move. That partnership's going to hell in the handbasket. I mean, shit, are you serious? It's just the way it is. I'm not even making that up, but you guys know it. And what, what's going to be the politics of space? Is it going to be the same politics that we see here, Earthside? I don't know, man. It, it is pretty tricky, but uh, Space Force is building up. They're getting all their money together. They're building and making connections, and they are working hard to get, quote-unquote, capabilities into space. It would be great to see in about maybe two, three years what Space Force actually turns out to be versus what we thought it would be. Check out this track.
This next article is pretty short. It's uh, more like a PSA for you guys in New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico is uh, about to get the business kind of like um, Boca Chica is in Texas, to be honest. It turns out Virgin Galactic is going to try it as, uh, as best as possible to stay on track for that first launch next year with some paying customers. And actually, that first launch should include Sir Richard uh, Branson. He should be on it. But until you get to that point, you've got to have the, uh, I don't know, space flight dummies first, the test dummies, to uh, get on Starship 2. And um, uh, is it Starship? No, Spaceship 2. To get on Spaceship 2 and test it out first. So what's going to happen for you guys in New Mexico who are not too far from Spaceport America, two tests are coming out. One of them, as early as October of this year, there will be two pilots who will be taking off from Spaceport America in New Mexico, and uh, they are going to go into suborbital space. So get ready. It's going to be completely nuts. <clears throat> so you, I wonder if uh, spaceship, uh, spaceport, God, I can't talk about uh, Virgin Galactic and uh, Elon and SpaceX in the same damn episode because I get all confused. Um, I just wonder if Spaceship 2 has the same following that Starship has in uh, South Texas. Is there going to be a big-ass crowd lined up at... Um, Spaceport America to check out the launch of this particular craft. I don't know. Who knows? But the thing is, this um, this spaceship too really is for tourists. It's it's not mission related. So I'm sure they'll take a couple of rats and throw them on there. Maybe a few monkeys once in a while. The ones that spend over a quarter million dollars to get on there. But let's be honest. Everyone's focused on the one ship, Starship. But Starship 2, Space space 2, I'm just going to hit my head against the mic. That's what I'm going to do. Just going to just bang it just once, just to knock it all into, into, into place. Spaceship 2 still has a bit of a following, right? Because in Spaceship 2 is where... An individual who um, has saved up a lot of money, has a really, really good paying job, or, um, you know, has a, I don't know, elderly parent or grandparent that dies off and leaves them some money, can actually get to, for a few minutes, go into low orbit and feel what it is to be in space and answer for themselves whether or not they see a turtle with all of the uh, continents on his back. That is probably one of the most obtainable versions of flight into space that we, the blue-collar folks, the workers of the planet, can actually do. Besides that balloon that's uh, supposed to go into a um, suborbital flight down in Florida, and I think there's another one somewhere else that they're also planning that in some other country. Uh, but listen, these are the ones that are more attainable by us for the next few decades. Because, you know, all, you know, all Tom, Dick, and Harry that uh, work down at the local brewery or in some call center somewhere, they're probably not going to be able to go into deep space and land on Venus or Mars or anything like that anytime soon. Probably not in the next lifetime or two because it's going to be controlled by missions, exploration that are official and uh, we poor saps won't be able to do that. But for the love of Pete, if you got the money, what better way to uh, really end your time here? There is nothing greater than that than to see the entire blue planet for a few minutes from deep space. Something you would soon not forget, and I'm sure these companies will not let you forget it because they'll sell, they'll sell you a DVD with a video of the whole thing, I'm sure, for like a, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Um, but that's what's happening. So on October 22nd starts the window for flight for uh, Spaceship 2 and Virgin Galactic. And um, these two guys, which I will call right now, 
at the moment, Bob and Doug, until they are named. Because from now to the end of time, Bob and Doug are the names associated with demo flights. So these guys will be heading up there sometime starting August 22nd. But there's a window, so we're not really sure how long that window is. It's not in this article. But down there in New Mexico, keep your eyes to the sky. Because between October 1st and October 7th, the White Knight 2 which is what the uh, Spaceship 2 atta- attaches to, will be conducting flights. So you'll be able to see at least the White Knight 2 out there flying around. Funky looking airship, as you all know. But keep your eyes out. It's not a UFO. It's the White Knight 2. That is pretty much everything. It's all up in the air, but if it's successful... We will see in 2022, um, Sir Richard Branson will be one of the first folks to get on the uh, inaugural flight after Bob and Doug, the Virgin Galactic version, uh, do their thing. And actually, October 22nd is the uh, the window for the first flight, uh, you know, late October. The next one in between then and the end of the year will have four crew members so it'll be Bob 1, Bob 2, Doug 1, and Doug 2. Eventually we'll know what their names are. But these are basically the uh, the demo crew. Until the big cheese gets to get on the flight and uh, check out low orbit for himself. This is the end of the podcast. Uh, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Mr. Dynamite himself from the No Big Deal podcast will be back with us on YouTube for the Thursday Freakout. And it's all about Venus, baby. It's all about the Venus madness that apparently um, is permeating through the internet because it's all real. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some other stuff. And I don't know. I have this thing lately about... uh, Hybrid alien babies. We'll we'll see if we can get uh, Joshua to chime in about these hybrid babies because there is something really strange going on. But uh, it could all be a distraction, right? This is the end for today. Ciao, adios, farewell, goodbye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dose. Yeah. Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. Show us up, I've been down and now below. Keep it a buck, I don't. Always been one up on all of these. They be trying to front for all of these. I ain't got time cause they all in they feelings. I said the gang and we making a killing. It's 2020 and they notice the vision. You be the hero, I'm playing the villain. The underdogs and we walk in the villain. We getting money, yeah, they think that we dealing. They talking hot, yeah, if they abundance and we won't stop till we all touch a million. Don't ever forget, but we probably forgive them. I'm living. Taking the cards that was given, my blessings is already written. Wrapped with a ribbon, putting ourselves in positions to making some major decisions. I Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. Show what's up, I've been down and now below. Look, look, I'm trying to get where I'm going, but haters be trolling, that's what they f- Thinking you got me right where you want me. I tell a ghost, just duck, duck. Sending them shots, we send them back, young. Ain't really about that. Run, it's always bounce back. Need more hands just to count that. Stay on my bully, I need me more breeze just so we can get the team right. Loaded up fully, dogs on a leash, and you be knowing that's a scary sight. Don't happen overnight. Work smarter with some sacrifice. Sugar spice and everything nice. Mix it up, now you got us twice. We bridging the gap, they want us to rap, so fuck are we back? Hey, yeah, you need a plaque, we turn to the max, and we never lack. Hey, yeah, been in my bag, been a drag, I'm feeling jet lag. Hey, yeah, came back for Vicky and I ain't in pack, cause I'm going back facts. Ooh, double the racks, TD the bank, you see these blank, the Cuban is link, smoking that thing, pull up a drink, fill up the tank. Do you think I ain't the one, but I'm the one? Who does I feel? He gon' dumb, you hit them drums, careful in the slums, they know we the ones, yeah. Started from the
on the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. Show us up, I've been down and out, but love, keep it a buck, I don't fuck with it. <laughs>